Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Brian Mitchell, who will be sharing his experiences with the Apple Watch Series 3. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO28. So, Brian. So, Ian. I hear you have a new watch. I do. Yeah. It, uh... Arrived in the mail last Friday, sometime around two fourteen, I think it was. <laughs> and so that's uh, that's like exactly a week after the pre-order started for it, right? Yeah, I I was uh, on a work trip actually, and I woke up at, at exactly two a.m. Went in there, <laughs> loaded the Apple Store app. I uh, tried doing it, said it was down, and so I forced quit it and opened it again, which is kind of the way you do it for Apple pre-orders. You got to use the Apple Store app. Pro tip: okay. their online store, not, not is the website. Correct. It re, uh, their Apple Store app refreshes way way faster, and you can have mm. Apple Pay set up if you're on an Apple device. Well, I guess oh, you yeah. have to be to get the Apple Store app. So you pay instantly. It's so much more seamless than it was just a few years ago. Even so, I got in there. I, I found it. It was a uh, favorite in my cart, and I just found it, bought it, and then I realized, oh, this is going to St. Paul where my parents live. That's <laughs> not right. And then I and then I further realized, oh, I didn't get the Apple Care warranty on this. So I'm like, well, okay, I will deal with that in the morning. So I was able to change the address uh, later that day on Friday. And then uh, the day after I got the watch this last Saturday, I biked to the Apple store and got the Apple Care warranty. So all is well in the end. That's impressive self-control, by the way, because like if I made that kind of mistake at 2 a.m., I would stay up until 5 a.m. trying to figure out how to correct, you know, all of the stuff that I had done wrong. So funny you should say that. I did this exact same thing when I got my first Apple Watch. Okay. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the first model in 2015. I forgot to order it with Apple Care. And now uh, that that watch I got, I think I was in the first one, but their shipping windows were, I think, three to four weeks. So mm. it was like beginning of May to end of May. And I was in Morris till about middle of May. So I was like, I don't want it to go to Morris and then... I not be there and have to go to Morris to pick it up or have someone carry it back or something. So I said, right. you know, it's more sta- more reliable if I just send it to my parents' house. So, of, of course, it arrives in one of the first days and it just sits there for a week before I can use it. But <laughs> yeah, oh well. What can you do? So I, I got it in the end, but... Yep. Okay. So, so you went from the series one to the series three and how long ago did the series one come out? So... The Series 1 came out with the Series 2. I have what is being called the Series 0. So it's the first generation oh. Apple Watch. So Oh, I didn't realize that yeah. they Yeah, so like a year and a half later, I don't remember the exact dates, they released the Series 2. And with that, they discontinued mm-hmm. the very first version. And um, they released a Series 1, which had the same features as the first one, but with the dual-core CPU that comes okay. with the Series 2. Mm -hmm. So they realized kind of right away that the first generation Apple Watch was a little slow. So I think that was good to kind of say, all right, we'll just make this cheaper one that's faster, but no other features. So then the Series 3 comes out and they still kind of have two two versions, but they're a little more in in line than the Series 1 and Series 2. So the Series 3 has a base and then a cellular version. So they they are identical except for the fact that the cellular version has... 16 gigabytes of onboard storage and the normal series three has the eight gigabytes that okay. has been on all of the previous Apple watches. Um, and considering that they're watches, that's, um, that's a lot of storage actually. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty good amount. And I, I personally use pretty much all of that for exclusively storing music on it. Mm. Now with that being said, I cannot remember the last time I streamed music from my watch, but I know that I can. <laughs> I generally use my phone because I think it's a faster interface to pull up songs and I can store mm-hmm. way more on my on my phone than I can on my watch. Um, so what other types of apps on your watch can store data? Like what what else would you use that storage for besides music possibly? Um, music and photos are about all I think. And the photos are ones that sync through your phone. So every night okay. Apple kind of will let apps sync stuff through. So uh-huh. the APIs they have available for sending things back and forth between a phone and a watch are they don't really provide progress indications and they are only over Bluetooth. So they're rather slow. And I think right. a lot of the time it requires you in their ideal way for low perf- low power use 
they have it at the night. So you sync stuff over every night when both devices are charging and you're sleeping and it can take all night long because you're not Mm -hmm. using it. I suppose not many people sleep with their Apple watches on their wrists, do they? Some do. So there are there are some sleeping apps that will use the accelerometer and gyroscope in your watch to uh-huh. to see and the microphone probably to see when you're moving around and it will, you know, provide data on when you are in bed and then when you're asleep while you're in bed. So if you're rolling around it might say you're asleep right. from here that, to that here. You're in a light sleep instead of a heavy yeah, sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I That's one thing yeah. that I I never realized that I was going to want that kind of thing until I had my Pebble and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm never taking this off my wrist." <laughs> yeah. I I have used uh some apps that do that on my watch a few times i don't so i did it for a little while because it was kind of nice to have all that data but i would Mm -hmm. rather sleep without a watch on now every so often i do fall asleep with my watch on still and so then i you know wake up in the morning and i'm like oh no i gotta charge this thing and i didn't even like use a sleeping app on my watch while i did it (laughs) but (laughs) generally i take it off so i can have a full charge because i would rather charge it once a day rather than like you know, 20 minutes while I shower and then 20 minutes while I'm like getting ready in the morning or something mm-hmm. like that or at night or vice versa. So, so about, so how long does the battery life last on the series three now? So my, I think it's, it's, or so Apple says it'll last 18 hours. So at all day of use. And uh-huh. I've found that to be true. My Apple watch series zero being what, two years and four months old ish. Start mm-hmm. was starting to be worse in terms of battery life. It would be dying sooner. I'd have less and less charge. If I forgot to charge it or I was like spending the night somewhere else, some friend's house or something, you know, I would wake up and it might be dead or like 2% and be like, oh, I got to get home. But mm-hmm. uh, this one seems to be much better. Um, so like today I woke up, I probably took it off the charger at... Uh, Jeez, what time was that? I don't know. Somewhere around 6.45, 7.30, somewhere in that range. And it's mm-hmm. at 76% right now. And in there, I did oh, wow. I did take a 15-minute walk and uh, later on a half-hour walk. And so it's great in terms of battery. Uh, I think the lowest I've seen this is, well, it's been under 10% because I thought I had a charging one night when it wasn't, but that's a different yeah. deal. Um, so it the battery life seems great. Um, now with that being said, uh, if you're using the new cellular features on here, the, I think the battery is, um, slated for four hours of battery if you're using cellular the entire time. Okay. So I assume that whenever it has a Bluetooth connection to your phone, it just like doesn't have its cellular radio on at all. Yeah, absolutely. It will, it's, it's quite aggressive for not using cellular. So mm-hmm. if your phone is nearby, it will use that exclusively. I think it'll even use your phone's GPS over your watch's GPS. Hmm. Don't quote me okay. on that, but that's what I that's how I would understand it. Um, but even when your phone is not connected to it, your watch will try to connect to any known Wi-Fi networks. And so that hmm. would be any network that your phone has connected to. It syncs that over iCloud. So okay. it will keep all the passwords and everything. Now, um, something that has come up is if your phone is connected to a captive wireless network, so that's one where you have to sign in through a web page to get onto the network. So you can connect to the network, but you don't have internet access until you log in through that web portal. Right. So your watch will connect to these networks and then it'll have no internet. Um, But it won't really know. It it can't uh, display the web pages. Exactly. Yep. Because there's no web browser on a watch. So I think there's some stuff Hmm. built in to try to uh, notice this, but at the moment it's, it's catching it a bit. Now I haven't Hmm. had that happen to me too much. I don't really go without my phone, so I haven't seen it too much. Uh, I think Apple did release a statement saying uh, an update will be coming later this fall that will try to improve this a little bit. Yeah, right on, right on. Um, have you have you done like much testing of like what kind of not exactly coverage, but you know, like comparing kind of the the like what signal you get with your phone versus like how strong the signal is on your watch. So I've only tried using the cellular portions once, and that was uh, at work at like 9.30 in the morning, right before a meeting, a uh, coworker said, so have you used the cellular part? And I'm like, actually, I haven't. I've had this for an entire weekend, and I haven't actually <laughs> tried using it. So I put my phone in airplane mode and waited. You know, it took a minute or two or three, eh, two, to have my watch kind of 
it knew it was on airplane mode, but the watch phone was not connected pretty quickly. And then um, I tried sending something and it waited a little while and then it did jump into cellular. Had, you know, pretty strong signal and then sent it. He got it. And I'm like, cool, it works. So then I went nice. back to my phone. Um, <laughs> now I did do a short bike ride the day I got it. Um, I biked a mile and a half out, got some cash and then biked home. And I did leave my phone home for that and uh, it was able to track me with the GPS. I was using Strava, which does support um, GPS alone on the Apple Watch. So I do have the ability to, to do that. And I think I Mm -hmm. might do that more often, especially if it's a route where I can bike when I know the route. I don't need my phone for GPS for like navigation. So I can leave my phone at home and just go with my watch. That'd be nice. Does the, does the watch have like a maps app in like on it that it could give you directions with, without a phone? It has a maps app. I've never tried using it without the maps app on my phone. Mm -hmm. Um, so normally when I'm driving or you can do walking directions as well, it'll just uh, tap your wrist. So if you need to turn left, it's three taps. And if you need to turn right, it's four taps. And a tap is like oh, a da-dun. Okay. So it's da-dun, 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 to go left and da-dun, 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 <laughs> da-dun, to go right. Uh, and so, It sounds like a, West, a Western song, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, But you just feel it. And you know, if, you're, if the tap sensitivity is all the way high, you can sometimes hear it too. So that that does tell you which direction to go. So that's a pretty nice feature if you're just going along in a city and you don't need to look at your phone. If you kind of have a general mm-hmm. note or a general idea of where you're going and you just need to know when is the actual turn and which direction, it's perfect for that. Right. Um, right. Does I, it display that on the on the screen? Yep. Or? It'll say turn left here, turn right here. So okay. it's good, just good. like the next step. And you can load a map yeah. in the Maps app to kind of see where you are, but it takes uh, – well, at least in the Series Zero, it took quite a while to load. I think that would be much faster mm-hmm. now. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, because if... because we did see uh, a demo of Brandon trying to open up Strava. Strava on. Does he have the Series Zero as well? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then you opening Strava on the Series Three, and it took it took Brandon's watch at least like 30 seconds to open it up, and yours uh, felt like just you know sliding over to a new page. So mine was already open; it hadn't quit. Okay. But okay. uh, yesterday I was uh, biking and I opened Strava and it hadn't been opened for a couple of days, so it wasn't in memory. Mm-hmm. And it, it took it did have that loading spinner, but it was nowhere near the amount of time that it used to take. It you know it was right. done in I don't know four or five seconds or something, and that was very much a order of magnitude faster. <laughs> Not quite, yeah. but yeah, you know, it, it was probably close to twenty twenty five seconds on the Series Zero to open. Um, so that's a huge improvement and just like like animation speed there's much more much fewer um, frames that are dropped um, mm-hmm. uh, it just like things seem smooth and and responsive and snappy and that's really nice to have um, that was something that has kind of been a problem with the first generation apple watch for a number of years now um so yeah, and especially yeah. when you consider that like this is a device that you are using like twenty four hours of the day kind of thing, you know. Um, whereas like you know if you if you have like a a computer that's a little bit slow and you just have to use it, you know, uh, every once in a while when you're doing something specific, like th- this is a device that is attached to your wrist, so you want it to be nice and snappy like all the time. Yeah, and I think um, the Series Zero was tolerable. And I think I was, I'd much rather have that slow than not at all. But, and so like, I think, you know, that's kind of what I was used to and it progressively, well, the other, other experiences were improved over time with watchOS 2, 3, and 4. So Mm -hmm. things were getting better overall, but it still took a little while. And so the series three kind of sums it all up with saying, okay, here's all the same great things, but it's going to be like a hundred times better because you'll actually enjoy using it much more than before. Good, good. Um, so a couple new or a couple other new things were in the Apple Watch Series Three. So they um, added a barometric altimeter. So this is a little pressure sensor that will tell its altitude. So you can see you okay. know, if you're going upstairs. So there's now a built-in flight climb uh, count for the day and activity. Uh, I think there's APIs to use it in like a ski slopes or like a skiing app for mm. hitting the slopes in the mountains. That's so funny because like I work in a building that is all one floor. Hmm. So, <laughs> so I would not be getting very much uh very many points from that. 
Yeah, I I've mostly only gotten it from like going to my basement doing laundry. Yeah, my workplace mm-hmm. is also single floor, so don't hit I'm, those I'm stairs very often. Very, I'm very curious about the fact that like a barometric sensor is, can be accurate enough to like tell when you're going up and down flights of stairs because like, um, like the atmospheric pressure in a given area changes like you know constantly. So. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting. So I think they do mix a lot of it with the accelerometer. So if if uh-huh. your motion is moving like you are on a stair, it's going to then check the barometric altimeter to kind of see, okay, I think this is stair stair climbing. So what is the pressure difference? Is this about the flight of a stairs? Uh, you know, is it like 10 feet of difference in pressure in a reasonable right. short amount of time? Yes. So I'm curious what the Makes margin sense. of error is on that reading though. Um, cause like mm-hmm. a strong, a strong, uh, storm coming through while on a run. Will that count as stairs? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, another new feature of this watch is the W2 chip. So last, and that's not, that's not the CPU, is it? No, this is the, uh, uh networking chip. This is um, okay. an Apple chip. It has the Bluetooth and wireless or Wi-Fi cards on it. Um, so is this the chip that they launched with the uh, AirPods? Yes, yeah, the, the earbuds, whatever they call it, they're called. Yeah. So last fall, yeah, I think the W one was introduced with Apple Watch Series two, and maybe this, it was Series two. I don't know. At least the AirPods and the new Beats headphones as mm-hmm. a much lower power, um, more efficient wireless chip. Okay. And so now they have a newer version in the Apple Watch and there's numbers on it. I think uh I don't know, somewhere between 80% and and faster. It is faster. <laughs> so nice. um they had some announcements in their iPhone event a couple of weeks ago. Um uh, I don't really notice it. It's just uses less power, so that's kind of cool, sure. I guess. Um so the LTE hooks up um to I think all the major carriers in the United States at the moment, mm-hmm. and um, Apple is giving three months free uh, when you sign up. So when I went through, I was using the Apple Watch app on my iPhone, and up comes a screen saying, "Would you like to use Cellular and set it up now?" So I said, "Sure." So it knew I was on AT and T, so it brought me to the AT and T page, where it kind of signed in, said, "Yes, turn on, agree to terms and terms and service, blah blah blah," and then they said, "And Apple, you know," and there's a credit for $55 for the activation fee and the first three months. So I said, great. Um, so it will be $10 a month. And I think that is pretty much the same across all carriers in the United States. I know. And I'm very like, that's very interesting that they were able to have such a consistent price. And also that Apple was able to like offer a free three months, no matter like what carrier you're on. So yeah, that's like, they must've been really you know throwing their weight around yeah i i've only really heard it through at&t so other carriers might do more or less i'm not exactly sure that might be on the carrier mm-hmm. basis i know there's a carrier in the united kingdom that at least does a six month free and they charge mm. um five pounds a month so about ten dollars a month um if you do the conversion um so uh, all the carriers kind of have had these number sync as at&t calls it um okay devices on their plan so that's uh, a device that will share the same phone number as another device Mm -hmm. Um, so you're just kind of syncing things and that's intended for like smartwatches so i think um there's some android wear devices that talk to the cellular networks that are set up very similarly yeah and i couldn't i couldn't tell you which ones because i don't i haven't been paying attention (laughs) there's a there's a uh a moto one there's a samsung one or two I don't remember. Yeah, and I know that I, I know at least one of Samsung's cell, cellular uh, smartwatches is running their own operating system. It's not an Android Wear. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, whatever they called that, Tizen maybe. I don't remember what they called their operating system. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and then one one little note here. So the uh, cellular version has a red dot on the uh, digital crown. So that's the mm-hmm. the wheel that you turn to adjust. Um, and scroll in the interface and so that's kind of an indication of all the cellular models and i think that comes from some high-end watches when you get the high-end features or any extras they come with a red dot somewhere 
That's what I read. Okay. Uh, so it's not so so it's not that every series three has the red dot. It's only the LTE ones. Correct. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, interesting distinction between between it all i think that's mostly kind of a, a status fitting in with high-end watches or something right. like that so if you have the the like wi-fi model uh series three is are there any visual indications to like separate it from the series two or the series one uh it's two hairs thicker <laughs> so. i thought that was only the lte model that was um, it's a little bit thicker because of the radio that was built into the s- Yeah, the actually, that's a good idea. Screen. Let me compare the specs here. So, um, let's see. A standard Series 3. Okay, so the weight. So, the cellular model. the So, this is the um, 42 millimeter, which is the version I have. Uh, and in the aluminum, the cellular model is 34.9 grams. And the normal one is 32.3 so pretty okay. close a few grams the depth is the same though at 11.4 millimeters okay. and that's the same on 38 and 42 millimeter and by the way that is something that i'm really really impressed by is the fact that apple was able to incorporate lte into the watch with, with and only add two paper widths worth of 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 thickness um whereas like when we started seeing lte um, Android Wear watches like a year and a half ago or whatever, uh, they were really huge and thick and monstrous. So yeah, so funny you should say that because the um, the Apple watches have only gotten thicker. <laughs> the oh, yeah the it's that slow creep, right? Yeah, exactly. So the 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 Series Zero, you, it looks very similar, but you can just kind of tell it just looks a little thinner. Mm-hmm. And now that might be because I had the space gray of that and I bought the silver one for the series three. So it, it might just be the color differences kind of jumping out, but mm-hmm. it, it does look a little thicker. And that was something they added in the series two. And then in the series three, they made the bottom part a little thicker as well. The part that mm. has the sensors on it. So, but when you think about it, adding cellular and hardly adding any width is a feat in its own. Oh yeah. Um. Yep. 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 And from what I can tell, I was looking at some of the teardowns and a lot of the hardware that's in the Series 3 was actually in the Series 2. So there's some thoughts that the Series 2 was originally going to support LTE and they decided to not uh, do that Hmm. pretty late in the process. So they kept antennas in there and things because it sounds like pretty much all that was missing was the actual cellular modem chip, which I thought was quite interesting. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So let's see. So I guess the other thing that goes along with physical appearance is uh, watch bands, right? Which is something that I had never really thought about and still, until smartwatches started coming out. Yeah, same um, here. Do, do, does it have like the same lug size or whatever that's called for? Yep, it's the as, as the others. Absolute same as the previous one. So all 38 millimeter ones will work with any generation of Apple Watch, and same for 42. Um, nice, nice, nice. So I had the uh, sport band in black that came with my first generation Apple Watch. And mm-hmm. when I got this one, I got the white or the, what do they call it? Apple Watch silver aluminum case with seashell sport loop. So this <laughs> this sport loop is a new band they have. So it's kind of like a a, a little bit of a Velcro thing here. I'll, I'll un-Velcro it in front of the microphone. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of so hear satisfying. it. satisfying. So you can kind of hear it. It had, uh, so it's five little strips of um, the uh, the hook part on the Velcro. And the whole the whole band is kind of the Velcro uh, sticky thing. So it's it's pretty light resistance, but it's it's still strong. So it's kind of a good medium for Velcro because a, a lot of Velcro out there is just, you just tear it apart and it eventually right. wears out. So I'm curious how this will age as I will probably take it off uh at least once a day but probably once or twice or probably average between one and two times a day over the life of the watch didn't you have like a greenish kind of like canvas watch band for yeah so i have a a a uh navy blue tahoe blue i forget what they call it um uh nylon band and that's uh quite nice i like that a lot that's probably was that a first party one or was that yep, like that's an apple one okay that's probably okay. one of my more favorite bands I have a new leather band that I got from Amazon that was six dollars. 
that looks pretty nice. It's still quite new. Um, it might have some nickel in it or something. I don't know. My wrist seemed to be getting irritated from it. So I'll try that again later. Mm-hmm. Um, then I have the black sport loop. I have a third party NATO style um, nylon band. Uh, and that one, that one I used for quite a while. That's kind of like a black and gray stripe. And okay. I used that for a while, but the there are some you know loops that you put the strap through. There are two of those, and they're aluminum, and they're kind of they're big, the, the little oversized looks. So you can bend them flat on the band, and so mm-hmm. they just kind of took up space, and it was a little heavy. They kept banging into like my keyboard as I was typing and things like that, oh, especially yeah, on my yeah. Mac bucket. Like the metal on the on the strap would hit the metal on the case and just make yeah, noise and, and then they kind of scratch across yeah, each like, other uh, and make no, that noise. That's and, horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. The poor MacBook. And then I have a, another leather band that is um, just the band I got on Amazon and the lugs as adapters for current watch bands. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that route. The The band I got ended up being really cheap and the lugs work, but you'd have to find a really nice band if you want. And I think a lot of the the Apple Watch accessories are good, just going to be better or built better and maybe look better with an Apple Watch if they are designed for it from the beginning. So Right. Yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, looking good, um, has the interface on watchOS itself kind of changed at all? Yeah. So watchOS 4 came out with with this watch more or less. So they added a a couple of new things. Um, The home screen with the the grid, hexagon kind of grid thing. So that's still there, but you can also add just a list of apps by alphabet or alphabetically. And so this lists it with the title of the application and a little logo to the left. And I switched to that. I think it's way easier to find an app that way, unless you use the home screen a lot and really remembered where all your apps are. It's right. it's difficult to find what you're looking for, especially when things like the timer app and the stopwatch app could probably be interchanged and you would not really remember. Their, mm-hmm. their icons aren't quite easy enough to follow. You really almost look for color over anything else, and that becomes difficult when you have a ton of multicolored applications. And you're not like, and and you're not just scrolling in one direction, right? You're not just going like on one axis. You've got two axes to yeah. worry about. So you kind of right? like you kind of pick a direction, look there. I think like I think I put this app there six months ago. Eh, no, mm-hmm. it's not there. Let me look around. And then you're like, I don't see it, and you have to go do it again. And it just took a while. So I think alphabetically, just um, may not be the fastest in all cases. It's the fastest right. generally. Do they have like sh- like shortcuts from the home screen? Like if you've got an app that you use all the time and you don't ha- want to have to look for it, like can you like long press on a certain button or something to open up? So in WatchOS 3, they added the feature for multiple watch faces. And so you can really uh-huh. easily switch between watch faces by just swiping um, from off the screen onto it. So just kind of like an edge edge swipe. And each each watch face has what they call a complication. So this is like a little mini app mm. preview thing. So this can be anything from a, a summary of your activity for the day, um, the, the current weather. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like, like widgets on your home screen on an Android device. Yeah, very little. So there are many, there are a few different sizes for different um, app faces you have. So like the modular face has this big center one that can fit three lines of text. Um, okay. but there are some other ones where it's just like one line of text at the bottom and then other little ones that's just a little square that you can fit like uh, three characters wide over two lines so very small space and that's so that's good for like a weather app so oftentimes things are just an icon so like mm-hmm. on my main watch screen um, I'll take a screenshot and add that to the show notes um, I have like the time um, the current day and then I have my activity summary so that's calories um, exercise minutes and stand hours. And then in the bottom left, I have um, the weather. So that's like current temperature and uh, chance of rain or any other kind of, um, I think it's, if it's not supposed to be rainy, it just shows a weather icon. Then in the bottom, I have a link to Overcast, which is the podcast app I use. And so that will let mm-hmm. me control any podcast that's going through my phone. And then in the bottom right, I have the workout app. Then I have another page, which is another watch face and this is more of an activity face it has an even larger summary of my activity and then top right i have the workout app top left i have strava so i can quickly get in there and then have weather on the bottom as well and then my third one is kind of like a um uh a a music or media app so i have it's the modular face at the same time and date but then i have the main one instead of being activity it's the now playing widget which is new in watch os 4 
bottom left is the music app, bottom is Overcast, and bottom right is Shazam. That will kind of cover most of my cases for any apps that I could use, I think. So you, okay, so so there's a concept here that I, I think I'm not quite connecting with. The, the different watch faces that you have, mm-hmm. you actually like actively switch between them on a day, on like throughout your day? Yeah, so I think that's the idea. So when, on watchOS 3, okay. on my old watch, I hardly ever switch watch faces. Um, right. Now, um, I think part of that was just due to the lag. It took a while to kind of switch and just, it, you mm. know, just a, a few extra seconds to load everything. And and on this thing, it's just instant. Um, mm. And actually, so I then, realized... So you uh, use those different watch faces as a kind of a proxy to just have like different, like different information available right there on the watch face depending on what context you want yeah so to me if i'm going to be biking it's faster to just swipe to the next watch face and tap the strava app than it is to go home and scroll to strava (laughs) so that's kind of what i'm using it for um it's funny and then you know if if i'm doing some activity like you know i so generally if i'm listening to anything on my watch i'm probably either driving or exercising and Mm -hmm. so oftentimes um the a workout app will be in the front front screen, so I can go home and just swipe over and then go into my music or something really, really quick. So that's a good use case for that. And then when I'm driving, new in WatchOS 4, Apple introduced the concept of a now playing kind of um, area. So this is a new a new app on the watch that will let you control the volume of what's currently playing as well as uh, standard like next play pause mm-hmm. impervious and then a title e- even if the app developer for that media player hasn't made a watch os app yep exactly right and actually okay. it's the only app on the watch that can control the volume of of the audio so they huh. don't have any apis for controlling audio volume for third-party developers which is quite problematic i think um but so if there is an apple watch app for whatever media is playing on your iphone it will mm-hmm. be. It will go to that app instead of the now playing app. So when I'm listening to okay. podcast through Overcast, it loads the Overcast watch app instead of the now playing app. So then I can do things like skip ahead 30 seconds or skip back 30 seconds, um, or or pull up and start a different podcast playing. But I can't right. change the volume. So I. That's really annoying. Yeah, I'm hoping Apple adds that in the future. Um, Marco Arment, the developer of Overcast, has a lot to say about watchOS and podcast okay. players. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. he's trying to get offline playback so you can put podcast podcast episodes on your watch so you don't need your phone to listen to podcasts. And I think well, that yeah, would be... Well, yeah, I mean, you've got 16 gigabytes there. Yeah, you know, you can, I think You it's... can store music on your watch. Why not be able to store podcasts on your watch? Yeah, it's, it's a perfect use case for that. Now, you can send audio files over and play them, but the, the app has no way to know where you are in that file if the file is done being played. And so there are hacks ah. you can do, like send it over by 10-second MP3 chunks and play 10 seconds at a time, and then it goes to the next track, which is just the next 10 seconds. And you can kind of sync that. That feels really icky. But but the app also isn't awoken when that track is done. So that app um, has to be in the frontmost application. You know, has to be screen on that app there. Oh man! Unless it it says it's a workout app, then it's allowed to run in the background. But so there's all these limitations with WatchOS as it stands today that I think mm-hmm. need to be ironed out. And it almost feels like Apple needs to, or Apple's kind of approaching it with okay, what kind of experience are we going to fix this year? So, you know, they might do big audio stuff in watchOS 5 or an update to watchOS 4. They would add some mm-hmm. of this stuff. But it's there's so much new stuff in this OS that it's quite limited still. And so I think in years to come, it will be improved, hopefully slowly but surely, or more surely than slowly, but... Um, hopefully, yeah. 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 So I, I think there's a lot of potential, um, especially as the device gets faster and more... Um, I guess has more storage and more capabilities at like LTE and things like that. Um, and right. WatchOS 4.1, which uh, will come out, I think in October, um, they'll be adding a radio app, which lets you stream from like Beats One Radio and other, um, I don't know, some other internet, or I guess no more more app, uh, Apple Music uh, channels and things. And then you okay, will... so we're not we're not talking about like streaming terrestrial radio stations. No, not quite. There's okay. no there's no FM uh, radio in here. 
right. that might be a feature for later. But I mean, like even even without uh, an actual FM radio antenna, like many many radio stations just have like streams available of their stuff on their websites. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. Maybe maybe they would add that. I'm not sure. Um, iTunes certainly supports that. Um, mm, mm-hmm. Now they also will add Apple. So uh, the music app um, on things before watchOS four would let you control and pull music from your iPhone as a source. You could uh, force touch on, or 3D touch, whatever they call it these days, on the Apple Watch and select uh, Apple Watch or iPhone as a source. And so mm-hmm. you would be able to play music um, and kind of control it as a remote on your iPhone or play it locally from your watch. Uh, now you can only do it from the watch. Now they've kind of redesigned the music app, so the interface is a bit cleaner. I, I think it's an easier way of using it. But mm-hmm. it's local to music just on the watch or if you stream it um, over your, through your phone or if you're just on Siler through Siler. But that's only when you are on watchOS 4.1. So they don't have that enabled for Siler quite yet. All right. So all right. things are going to be improving and coming up in the future. But we have to wait for now. Yeah. And, of course, if um, if there's a feature that isn't available on the Apple Watch and you've got an iPhone, there's not much that you can do because that's the only smartwatch that, you know, is going to have any kind of functionality. Um, yeah. Even though, you know, good like Android Wear technically can pair with iPhones, it, it's not going to have nearly the same integration. No, not even close. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hoping apps will support the cellular features soon um, or as time goes on. Uh, most apps have kind of made the assumption that they will always be paired with an iPhone. So mm-hmm. most of them don't support mm. using Siler. Um I know the Shazam app was updated to support Siler, So you can fully Shazam a song without ever needing to have your phone around. That's pretty cool, I think. Nice. Um, nice. So in a, an app like Shazam, you don't need to sync anything with your phone, really. It's pretty much it's an isolated experience. Right. Um, where some apps, you might kind of need to sync things to your phone. So that could cause almost an entire rewrite of an application so um it's a lot of work but hopefully people use it yep and i mean um developers had a little bit of time with watch os 4 before it came out right to start making these changes in their apps yep um now apple didn't i don't think apple explicitly said hey we're making a cellular version it was right it was rumored for a while and watchOS 3 did add the ability to um, use or do stuff just through Wi-Fi on the watch. So if your phone Mm -hmm. wasn't connected and your watch is in a Wi-Fi network, it could. So Apple oftentimes will hint at upcoming hardware through new software things. And so I think that's a good example of that. But They started telling uh, iPhone app developers that uh, you should probably start like programming apps so that they are not hard coded with the uh resolution and and screen absolutely aspect yeah ratio, the, right? the size yeah. classes yeah for sure yeah yeah that's the 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 perfect example for that i remember some of my apple history yeah good <laughs> well i think that so, about does it for yeah what... how much are these things going for again so the series three starts at uh oh gosh 329 dollars for the standard gps version and 399 dollars uh-huh. for the uh cellular for the version. lte version yep. so okay. 70 dollars more but you get cellular as well as uh double the capacity and then mm-hmm. the yep. the cost of and it looks like it's yeah. a 30 dollar bump for the uh for the size difference yep 30 dollars uh which is less than the first version of the watch i think the series zero was 50 dollars more so so what's what is the what do you get that's different with a bigger watch so i think the battery life is a little better um okay the screen resolution is different from the 38 to 42 um mm. so things are a little larger a little um i think the density is about the same so most apps i think are kind of written with 38 millimeter in mind so they work on there mm. um so things are just kind of blown up a little more padding um so it, i mean it seems kind of funny to me that like the larger version of the watch is thirty dollars more because that seems like the less desirable of the two to me yes well things are larger so it's a little easier to see um Mm -hmm. and battery life is better so i think that's something to weigh um i don't know if you have a larger i guess it really uh, yeah it really comes down to the size of your wrist yeah 
and you know how how a small watch might look on your arm versus a large watch. Now these are mm-hmm. you know four millimeter different, so it's not that big. Just at a glance, you probably couldn't tell mm. um, unless you own a watch or an Apple Watch yourself. But yeah, very cool, very cool. Well, Brian, thanks for joining us on Second Opinion, and thank you, listener, for listening in. Um, if you have any feedback for us on this episode or if you want to suggest a topic for us to review in the future, um, please get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at the Nexus TV, um, or you can send us an email at TV at gmail.com. Uh, this episode of The Extra Dimension, um, and actually every episode of The Extra Dimension, is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. So if you want to use any uh, of the audio from here, you are more than free to do that. Or even um, remix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just uh, be sure that you link back to this uh, this original site, um, which is, by the way, thenexus.tv slash SO28. Um, remember, you can go there to see links to some of the things that we talked about. Uh, Brian, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or my website, which is brianm.me. Or if you really want to follow up with how often I'm uh, using my Apple Watch, you can find me on Strava, which is <laughs> strava.com slash athletes slash 28101. And I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Uh, or check out my website, ianrbuck.com, to see other stuff that I make. Have a good one. Have a good one.